Hi there, this is uh, Shrikant Dasari. So, in this uh, lesson, uh, we are going to uh, continue our studies uh, about the introduction to uh, classes and objects concept in uh, uh, Java object oriented programming. So, first, uh, let me launch the IDE. Okay. So, we will focus on uh, the various access specifiers and uh, uh, defining classes within a .java file and what is uh, how in the background uh, the dot .class file is executed or created uh, to our respective classes in our uh, .java file okay so the id is uh, getting loaded here this said that means 8.0.1 which always takes a moment since my system is very ancient okay okay so first let us create a new project here so let's say find new project Java, Java application, and let's say uh, name our uh, project as uh, so Java, whatever you want to look at. So Java object 2, okay, so Java object 2 or Java intro 2, whatever you want to, you can say. So what happens here is uh, the NetBeans takes the privilege of creating a, a folder structure here in our project's uh, directory. Uh, it contains a .java file, uh, java object two dot .java. So whatever, it, uh, whatever uh, that's whatever it might be. So I'm just getting rid of all these comments. Okay. So just clearing my work environment here, workspace. Okay. So so that means uh, has given us just uh, a dot single dot .java file with the name of uh, the project itself, which is java object uh, java object two. Okay. So this is the basic, uh, since Java is a purely object oriented programming language, so whatever you are uh, going to, uh, the, whatever the operations to perform uh, uh, or going to be encapsulated within a class here, okay. So that's the reason, uh, so whenever you create a new Java file and it means like IDs, automatically your main method sits under uh, some public class here, okay. And that class is going to be the name of the file name also, okay. So these are all the basic uh, uh, setup standards. So there is no mandate that uh, you need to have only one class in your uh, uh, .java files. Okay. So according to your requirement, you can have as many as classes you, you want. Uh, so let's. Uh, I'm, just, I'm going to create uh, three more classes here, apart from the uh, main, uh, apart from the main class or uh, the, where the main method sits. Okay. So I'm creating a class with the class keyword class foo. Okay. So just I have created a class foo. In the same way, I'm creating another class class bar. So all these names might uh, sound silly to you. So you can uh, uh, give whatever the names uh, uh, you want. And just since it's just a learning purpose and introductory to classes, I'm giving this uh, arbitrary names for our uh, class. And you can also say pass, foobar pass here, okay. So I've just created uh, three different classes within our uh, .java file. So what happens now is in the background, uh, so first let us, uh, Go to, uh, get us let us browse the uh, project structure where our uh, project sits here okay so our project uh, whatever we create in the netbeans uh, sits here in the my documents uh, netbeans projects and there we have uh, so java uh, objects 2 i remember okay java objects 2 is the name of our project and in, in this this is the folder uh, project folder uh, all the uh, files necessary for our uh, project sits here the source file so is the one uh, which we are uh, creating now here okay so this is the dot uh, object uh, sorry dot java file which we are uh, simultaneously uh, coding in our uh, okay so whatever you code here and you hit save as soon as you finish it's going to save here in the background here okay so in the same way uh, we also have uh, mb project uh, where all the uh, data uh, regarding uh, uh, confidential data regarding all our uh, uh, so all our uh, project details uh, sits there here okay so that means uh, properties and uh, specifications and so on and so forth okay so that is the place where our uh, project sits if you want to go view or uh, zip your project and give it to someone else and that's the reason you need to browse there until they're here okay so here what happens is uh, as soon as you compile your uh, java program uh, so i have just hit this run button here triangle green triangle so what happens now is it just runs once, okay, compiles and runs, build successful. You go back to your uh, uh, code window, and you and now if you browse back to your uh, folder root directory, 
and you hit refresh and what happens now is uh, so there is a special uh, called build uh, folder uh, which is added to your uh, project directory here okay so previously this is not present here so this build got added and there you have a classes file here okay so whatever the classes uh, we have in our uh, uh, so total we have total four classes in our uh, java dot uh, java file here the first class is going to be the main class for where the main method says which is the java object 2 in the second class uh, simultaneously we have created three classes here okay so for all those classes uh, in our dot java file uh, there are uh, four different dot uh, uh, class files so if you go to some details view okay so you have uh, four different dot uh, class files so um, uh, created for us in the background so this dot class file if you open if you dare to open it within your notepad or whatever the id you wanted this is a byte code here okay so this is the byte code which is being uh, interpreted by your uh, jvm okay so if you study in detail about the java architecture uh, you have a jvm apart from the compiler okay so jvm is uh, is the one which gives you the feature of this java known as uh, architectural neutrality here okay so this byte code uh, will be interpreted by the particular jvm which is written for windows machine or linux machine or solaris machine so it understands this jvm uh, sorry it understands this byte code and uh, transforms this byte code uh, into a machine readable of that uh, platform okay the into the machine code which is understandable by that machine's architecture okay so there is a lot of details uh, if you go into that so by now you have to understand that uh, if you create so how many classes you are going to create in your uh, uh, .java file so that many uh, dot class files uh, get created in the background of your uh, project in the build directory here okay so if you're netbeans uh, uh, user uh, you can go browse to the build directory and uh, within the classes file so you find uh, as many as uh, uh, dot class files you have defined in your dot job file, okay so if you come back to your uh, id so here i have taken uh, three different classes so let's have some uh, uh, like uh, variables here okay so first let me say public int a so let's take simple and uh, silly names or else uh, public int b okay so now let me create another variable using the private access first pair now see the difference what happens here okay so here we have uh, three different uh, uh, variables uh, within the foo class here okay so what we can do is uh, so these these are the data members okay so data members let's have in a comment data members and uh, public so normally they they have to be uh, created or defined within a public uh, access first pair okay so if you use if you want to lock them or if you want to restrict restrict their access within this class so you need to have this uh, private uh, access first pair here okay so what happens is uh, so here uh, if you go to uh, the main method and first if you create uh, object for this uh, foo class here okay so in the previous lesson uh, you have uh, uh, created uh, object for this uh, foo class uh, so that's the reason uh, now we are going to so in order to access uh, in order to you be able to access the data members or methods uh, within your class you need to create an object first here okay so in the last lesson we have uh, used this uh, we have learned about the syntax for creating the objects so foo f1 is equal to new foo okay so with this syntax uh, you can create an object for your uh, uh, foo class here okay so using this uh, f1 object uh, and the dot operator so you can access okay so if you observe here the net, the net beans is smart enough that it's so it's only just showing the two of our uh, uh, variables okay so that means that so whatever the variables we have defined within the private uh, sorry public uh, access press pair only they are being notified in our uh, intelligence here okay so if you hit dot then it means it's smart enough it's just showing only the two members well, let me set some values into it so f1 dot t okay so f1 sorry f1 dot uh, b so let's say 20 okay so f1 dot b is equal to 20 so now if you dare enough to say that something like this f1 dot so although you don't see c that that means that the c is only restricted to that uh, environment okay oh, sorry in that class if you say so if you violate the tool and if you say something like this uh, 30 
and you will have this uh, ugly uh, red uh, red line here underlined here so that, which means that uh, the c has private access in foo okay so if also even though you violate and if you run your program also it's not going to work here okay it shows all the errors uh, corresponding to the so corresponding to our uh, okay so it shows the ugly ugly uh, errors uh, with our uh, program so the error is not specified here uh, specifically so okay so that's the problem uh, so we should, you need not use uh, this private access specifier here okay so if, you want, if at all you want to use the private data or initialize the uh, private data of your class so if you let me take one more uh, private variable here so let's say private uh, int t so if you want to access or if you want to uh, operate on that variables so you need to use a method here okay so let's say uh, let's define a method void set set private <laughs> let's have some meaningful name here so that, that's what we are intended to do so okay so let's say uh, c is equal to 30 and let's say d is equal to 40 okay so now let's uh, you know, write uh, another method okay so now, now everything works fine here okay so if you want to uh, operate uh, on your private data you need to define a method uh, within your class and then you need to uh, uh, operate uh, on that uh, variables by just uh, uh, storing some values or accessing the input from the user okay so let's design uh, define uh, one more method uh, for just for uh, displaying all the data so put well so let's name it as put well okay it's not put private it's not a silly sounding name so I've just defined a method uh, for just uh, outputting. So let me let me use this uh, system dot dot print statement. System dot dot so print ln method. Okay. So let me say uh, a is equal to plus a. Okay. So it works. So in the same way, let me copy the whole thing and uh, paste it four times. Since we have a b c d b c and t. So a b c and t. So in same we can change your uh, names here of the of your variables such that uh, you get the exact output. Okay. So everything is fine until now. So if you run your program, I run combine run your program using this green triangle or opposite button. So you get the output, but you're not getting <laughs> the silly reason because the behind that is we haven't called our uh, methods here. Okay, so we have just defined our methods, uh, we have just taken some data members, and uh, let's say we have comment here methods operating on private data. Okay, so methods operating on private data, so method displaying. The value stored in data members here. Okay, so we have just defined two uh, uh, methods and we haven't uh, uh, displayed or, or we haven't uh, called them. So in order to call them, uh, already we have this uh, f1 uh, table. Okay, so if we say something like this, uh, set private. So already it's netbeans uh, is smart enough. It, it's immediately uh, shows us to the path. So let's say put where okay. So I've just uh, called both the methods using our uh, dot operator. Okay. So using our uh, dot operator and the uh, name of the method followed by the semicolon here. Okay. So calling the method. So initializing the private. So let's all the detailed comments here. So initializing the public data members outside the class okay so let's say calling calling the methods using object okay so if you run your program so you get the perfect output here okay so whatever the data you have stored using uh, so public members or directly uh, public data members were initialized directly uh, and the private data members were set using the method here okay 
So this is the very very basic stuff about uh, the access specifiers uh, in Java and how they are related uh, in their uh, in the way they they are being accessed accessed outside the class and how to tackle with the private data members of your class by just defining a method and setting some values uh, uh, through that method and then calling those methods using our object here. Okay. So see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.